Hey, it's Dr. Phil. Welcome to Fill in the Blanks. You're back with me again. I hope you enjoyed uh, my first live Fill in the Blanks back with uh, Steve Harvey last week. Really had a good time talking to him. If you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to it because anytime he and I get together, we have a good time and I think you will too. I have had so many emails, questions, people talking to me on the street, even people in the studio audience chiming in and saying, tell us more about Merritt Street Media. So I'm going to talk to you about Merritt Street Media on this episode of Fill in the Blanks. Lafern Cusack is with me here. She's my producer, so she may lean over and chime in if she's got a question that she wants me to answer. She speaks for you guys an awful lot. So what am I talking about? I don't know how much you are up with what's going on, but you all know that after 21 seasons on CBS, 21 great seasons on CBS, I have to say, I decided to do something different, and that do something different is launching my own network. If you ever wondered what it's like to go from an hour a day, five days a week, to 24 hours a day, seven days a week, let me tell you, uh, you don't want to know. It's like rolling backwards down a hill, but I've never had more fun rolling backwards down a hill in my entire life because we're doing an awful lot of very exciting things. And people have asked, why did, why did you do this? Why did you want to make a change? I'm going to get real personal during this podcast and tell you what drove this decision, why I did it, and I'm going to tell you what Merritt Street Media is and what it is not. First off, I can't say enough good about CBS. They have been wonderful partners with me and still are today, as a matter of fact, because we're airing a lot of legacy episodes of Dr. Phil. So many of those episodes have not been viewed by so many of you because you can't watch every day. So check your local listings for Dr. Phil in daytime and you'll be able to find it on some new affiliates and on some of the same affiliates, but you'll be able to find it in daytime. I'm still in business with CBS in prime time. So proud of So Help Me Todd. We're in our second season right now, and it is such a great show. And I want to thank everybody that's being supportive of that because it's one of the top comedy dramas. It's really a drama, but with a kind of tongue-in-cheek humor uh, on the side. It, it's just such a great show, and I'm really proud of it. And we've got some others in the wings that we're getting ready to do in partnership with CBS on the network and um, on Paramount Plus. So I'm continuing to be partners with CBS. They're a wonderful family, nothing but good to say about them. So it was certainly no friction with them that caused me to make a change. But I wanted to do something different, something broader than what I was doing. And I've spent 21 years over 3,500 episodes of Dr. Phil with CBS as my home network. And I'm so proud of what we did in those 21 years. We wanted to make a difference in the narrative. We wanted to push mental health and mental illness and the ability to talk about that openly to the forefront of Uh, people's minds and make it okay to talk about those things in polite society. And I think we've had an impact on that. And I think we are continuing to have an impact just kind of in society on that. And I, I hope people have learned a lot from what we've talked about, whether it's mental illness or how to be healthy, how to be motivated, how to parent better, how to resolve marital differences, whatever it might be. I think we've made a real difference in that regard. So I'm very proud of the body of work. You know, some shows are better than others, some taught better than others, some probably better left undone. I walked away scratching my head sometimes, thought, what the hell did I get out of that? But all in all, when you've done 3,500 plus shows and you're, you're proud of the body of work, then I think it's, it's been a victory. You know, across time, 
when you listen to your viewers, things change. The questions that you get sent in change because one of the things we prided ourselves on most was listening, listening to our viewers, talking about what all of you wanted to talk about. Those questions change across time because people change. We spanned generations. We we went from one generation to the next. We had Moms and dads come on with their teens saying, yeah, I can't talk when I come home from school because Dr. Phil's on, so I have to go have a snack till Dr. Phil's off. And then 10 years later, here they are, and they're coming on and saying they have children now. 15 years later, they're coming on saying we have children now, and their children are sitting there rolling their eyes. We can't talk now because Dr. Phil's on. And we laugh about that, but I'm proud of the fact that we've actually spanned a generation across time. But the questions change. And you have to think about this. When we started in 2002, people weren't emailing all the time. There weren't any social media platforms. There weren't any smartphones. But then around 08, 09, when that happened, then the world really changed. And it really changed for young people because In my view, they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives and comparing themselves to those people living their lives. So we had to change with that. The words cyber and bullying had never been used in the same sentence before because there was no such thing as cyber bullying, but all of a sudden there was. And so now we had kids that would not just get bullied at school, but it would follow them home, or they would change schools, and it would follow them to the next school. They couldn't escape it. So I had to adapt, and my staff had to adapt, and we had to start looking at different kinds of psychosocial research. And I was asked to come testify before Congress with the reauthorization of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act when they were saying, what do we do about this? Do we need to dedicate funds to deal with cyber bullies. How do we handle this? There were educators there saying, well, oh, this happens off campus, so it's not our problem. It's not our job. Yes, it is. You're with these kids 40% of their waking hours, and these relationships are formed at school. They just continue at home. So you are part of the equation. You do need to make this a part of the curriculum. So we were fighting these battles on the air. We were fighting these battles on the internet. We were fighting these battles on Capitol Hill. I was writing columns about it. I was giving interviews about it. I was testifying about it on Capitol Hill. So we had to start changing what we were doing. And as time went on, and I I hit 18, 19, 20 years, we started seeing new challenges arise, social challenges. It wasn't just marriage and family anymore, but things were invading the family boundaries. We were starting to see activists pushing agendas in school. We started seeing kids getting all of their information on TikTok, for God's sakes. There are portions of the population that get 100% of their news on TikTok. Problem with that is it has no vetting. A lot of those people have an agenda. They're selling something. They're not reporting the news. They're not helping teach kids how to think. They're telling them what to think. It's the old parable teach a man to fish, he'll eat the rest of his life. Give him some fish, he eats tonight. I reverse that. It actually says, Give a man some fish, he'll eat tonight. Teach him to fish, he'll eat the rest of his life. And that's the thing about critical thinking. If you teach someone how to reason, how to think, how to really be deductive in their thinking, then they can generalize that to every situation. If you just tell them what to think, even if you're right, even if you're accurate, you need to teach them how to think for themselves. Parents were very concerned about that. We saw with the advent of the smartphone Anxiety, depression, loneliness spiked in 09 and 010 to the highest level since records had been kept. And parents were saying, my children, they're not themselves. They're, they're really emotionally unstable. They're lethargic. They're depressed. They're, 
lacking in self-esteem and self-confidence, and parents' reaction was to start trying to help smooth the bumps for them. Bad choice. They need to smooth their own bumps. But they were delayed developmentally. They were starting to date later than the generation before. They were starting to get their driver's license later. They were engaged less socially. We have a generation that's that's lagging behind in almost every aspect. So we started getting those questions. And I started to say that family was under attack. I first said that back in 2004 when I wrote Family First. How little did I know that was just the beginning. And why do I say it's under attack? Because even when you see a family together, they're all on the phone. They're all looking at screens. They're so engaged in all of that. And they don't really want to be. When we ask them why, they, they give you a four-letter answer, FOMO. F-O-M-O, fear of missing out. They don't necessarily want to be on that phone, but they're afraid if they're not, they'll miss what's happening. They're afraid that people might be talking about them and they won't know it. They're afraid they'll miss some cool trend that's going on. They start confusing clicks and likes with real friendships, real relationships. So all of these things begin to change the dynamic of our society around us. And we had to change with it. And we did. You watched. We did. We brought in kids that were getting seduced on the internet. Online predators were lying to them and luring them out their bedroom windows to meet them in the middle of the night thinking that it was one 14-year-old talking to another, but when that 14-year-old girl got there, they found out it was a 45-year-old pedophile that got them into the car, and off they went. And Maybe we find them later. Maybe we find their body later. It was terrible. We had to change with that. You know, I had written nine books. I told Robin, I don't want to write any more books. Too much work takes too much time away from family, away from my grandkids, away from things that I was focused on. But I was sitting in the kitchen one night. Robert and I were sitting side by side, and we were having dinner, and we were flipping around on the television, going from one news source to another. And uh, I was getting pretty agitated. I said, I'm so frustrated with the media. You go to one cable news network, and they're telling you all of this, spin, 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 to the right, go to another, spin, 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 to the left. And my God, why didn't somebody just tell us what happened and let us make up our own mind? Just spin zone, spin zone, spin zone. Don't you get tired of that? You know, everybody's talking about Trump. Everybody's talking about this, talking about that. Just tell us what happened. I was grousing about that. She didn't even look up from her plate. He just said, you know, you're so frustrated with the media, the fact that they won't get this right, that you know you are the media. And she said, and as a matter of fact, those last three or four you've clicked one to the other, back and forth, your ratings are higher than all of them combined. You can have a bigger impact. You can have a bigger influence than all of them combined. So instead of complaining about it, why don't you do something about it? You have more to say. You have greater insight. You have more understanding. You have more of a relationship. Those are channels. You have a personality-driven brand. People know you. They trust you. Why don't you do something about it? That haunted me. I have to tell you, it really haunted me. Because as I looked around, I saw things happening in America that bothered me greatly. I saw this country, in my opinion, headed in directions that bothered me. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, you know, Dr. Phil, are you arrogant enough to think that you and you alone can change the course of this nation? And the answer is no, of course not. I can get pretty cocky sometimes, but I am not arrogant enough to think that I can change the course of this nation. But you know what? I can help. I can have an impact. And whether it is to serve or to lead, 
I can have an impact. And if you sit around waiting for someone else to do it, and they're all sitting around waiting for someone else to do it, then pretty soon nobody does it, and you lose by default. You lose ground by default. You give up influence by default. And the greatest way to get power away from someone is to convince them they never had any to begin with. You convince them they never had a voice, they never had the ability to make a change, and so they just continue to sit on the sidelines. It became clear to me that I need to broaden my lane even more than I had in the past. I needed to do something to get people's attention. I know some things, and the things that I know needed to be shared. Because psychology is a broad lane. It deals with your personality, but it also deals with collective personalities. If there are four people in a family, there are at least five personalities. Mom, dad, brother and sister, sister and sister, brother and brother. There there are at least four personalities, but there's also a collective personality of that family. And if you've got 10,000 families in a small town, then there are at least 10,001 personalities because there's a collective personality for that community. I learned this so clearly when I was doing jury work. There would be 12 people on the jury, but there were at least 13 personalities over there. There were 12 individual personalities, but then that jury took on a collective personality. And typically, there were many more than just 13. There were the 12 plus the collective, but then there were cliques within those 12. There were were groups, three or four would band together, and then two or three would band together. And so you would have the 12 personalities, then the one collective personality, then you would have little subsets. You would have 15, 16 personalities over there that you had to deal with. Think about our country right now. Is California the same as Georgia? Not by a long shot. Is Texas the same as Illinois? No. We have different personalities. States have personalities. They have collective personalities. There are regional personalities, and they, and they differ on different subject matters and topics. That's why there's social psychology. That's why there are psychosocial issues to deal with. You know, what kind of school does your child go to? Are they a conservative school? A progressive school? Are they talking to them about their pronouns or are they talking to them about math? It matters and you need to know. And so I was getting a lot of letters saying, you know, Dr. Phil, I, I have a child in college. It's, it's an elite college on the East Coast and they're talking about a quality of outcome. I'm spending a quarter million dollars to send this child to school to get an elite education. But then when he got there, they're saying, hey, We want everybody to come out the same. Well, then why does he need an elite education? If you can sit home in a beanbag and eat Cheetos all day versus somebody that goes out and works 14 hours a day and they're going to both come out the same, why do I need to spend this quarter million dollars, which I desperately need for my retirement? Or a young man or woman that's taking out $100,000 in student loans that is going to take them decades to pay off Do they really need to do that if what they're preaching is that we all come out the same? These were serious questions from people that they were asking. Then COVID comes along and shuts everything down. And I spoke out at the time and said, you know what? They're shutting these schools down, and this prolonged quarantine is going to cause more damage to these young people than this virus ever could. And people looked at me like I was some kind of lunatic. They looked at me like, oh my God, some village is missing their idiot. Did you hear what he just said? And they criticized me soundly for it. And I doubled down and said, no, I'm sticking with what I'm saying. I'm right. And sadly, I'm going to be proved right. And sadly, I have been proven right. You want to know how many of those people that were criticizing me for saying that? who are now saying exactly what I was saying two years ago, three years ago. 
You know how many of them have contacted me back and said, hey, you know what? You were right. How about none? And that's okay. I don't need anybody to call me back and tell me I was right. I knew I was right when I said it, and I know I'm right now. And you know what they said? Well, they said a lot of things. But the people who shut down the schools are the same people that were keeping the data that said we had the highest level of anxiety, depression, suicidal thought, and suicidality since records had been kept, which means they knew it. They knew the truth. They knew these kids were in trouble. They knew they were mentally and emotionally in trouble. And they knew that those schools were the lifelines. They knew the schools is where the mandated reporters were. And when they shut the schools down and those children weren't falling under the studied gaze of the mandated reporters, who are the primary source for referrals to the Department of Child and Family Services, Child Protective Services, referrals dropped as much as 40 or 50 percent in a lot of states. Now, do you think abuse and molestation went down 40 or 50 percent? Of course it didn't. We just didn't have the eyes on these kids to report it. Why not? Because the kids were abandoned back to their abusers behind closed doors with nobody to protect them. And they knew they weren't vulnerable to the disease. They knew this disease was not a great life threat to those children. Did it take some children's lives? A few. But comparatively, they were very low risk. So the same people who knew they were at low risk, who knew that they were in a mental and emotional crisis, yanked away their support systems. And what they said was, well, we did the best we could with what we knew at the time. No, you did not. You did not do the best you could with what you knew at the time. You had no plan to reopen the schools when you shut them down. You just shut them down because you had a new hammer and everything looked like a nail. And now those kids are compromised. Now those kids are behind socially, emotionally, academically. Will they ever close the gap? I don't know. Some progress has been made, but not near enough. Pediatric epidemiologists suggest that millions of years of life have been lost. Why? because these children will have less educational attainment. With less educational attainment, they will get lesser jobs. With lesser jobs, they will have poorer insurance coverage and higher risk occupations. Diseases will be diagnosed later, which means the progression will be greater, which means lives will be lost to the disease process. They'll be injured on jobs. They'll have poor care. And it just shaves years of life off the end of their lives. Tragic mistake. Nobody's calling this out. I'm calling it out. I'm not nobody. Few people are calling it out. And I'm one of the voices it is. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I've launched my own network. It's called Merit Street Media. And you can find out about it by going to MeritStreetMedia.com. Com. On the home page, you're going to see a button there that says Channel Finder, because we're on all different kinds of platforms. We're on cable. We're on streaming. You can get it if you've got rabbit ears. You can't escape it. When you go there, you're going to find a, a button that says Channel Finder. You're going to hit that button, and it's going to say, enter your zip code. When you enter your zip code, there's going to be a list of places that you can watch it in your community, whether it's DirecTV or Dish or YouTube TV or wherever. I've got a video that talks about that. And if you're taking a walk right now or you're listening to this in your car, you can't see the tape piece. But as you listen to this, and I'm going to roll in some others, just hearing it will explain what I need you to understand. So don't think, well, I, I can't watch this. I'm I'm walking or I'm driving my car. 
I selected these. So if you're watching this on YouTube or something, that's great. If you're walking right now or you're driving or something, just listen. These are very brief tape pieces, and hearing what's said will give you a sense of what I need you to see. You don't need to see it in order to understand it. If you get a chance later to watch it, uh, do so, or if you go to MeritStreetMedia.com, those tape pieces are there and you can see them there. But you don't need to see them to understand. So just listen to the tape piece if you're walking or driving. If you are watching on YouTube, then you can watch it and you'll understand it completely. Hey, Dr. Phil here. So excited to talk to you guys about Merritt Street Media. And lots of people are asking, where can I watch? Where do I find it? Well, I got good news because the answer is everywhere. You can't own a television and not get Merritt Street Media because we're going to be in 80 million homes and counting. It's going up all the time. And here's what I need you to do first. I need you to go to your computer and get to one of your search engines, wherever you find the things that you go to, and type in MerritStreetMedia.com. So I'm going to show you. Let's go to the computer, and you're going to type in MerritStreetMedia.com. Okay, when Merritt Street Media uh, pops up, you're going to see a screen like this. And you'll see up here it says Merritt Street. And to the right, you've got Shows, Schedule, Channel Finder, About Us, and then a button over here for Channel Finder, and then one down here for Find Channel. And you need to click here, Channel Finder, or here, Channel Finder, doesn't matter, uh, but we'll just use this one right here, Channel Finder. You click that, and it brings you down here. Uh, come down from that, and you'll see where it says Enter Zip Code. And so you, you type in your zip code, and let's assume you live in Bayside, New York. So we'll put in the zip code for there, which is 11360. All right, and then you click Search Providers. All right. At that point, a list comes up, and it gives you all the different ways in Bayside that you can view. All the viewing options are just listed right there. If you want to watch on regular TV and you have an HD antenna, then you would go here and you would see channel 63.1 or channel 54.2. That's WMBC or WTBY. Uh, either one of these, uh, you'll be able to watch us there. Okay, if you have satellite, direct TV, for example, channel 306 or 306 HD. If you have DISH, you can see us on 247 or 247 HD. Now, if you have cable, uh, Spectrum, for example, channel 63 or 1233 HD, or if you have Verizon Vios, you can see us on channel 18 or 518 HD. Now, there are also uh, streaming options there, and right now you can go to Sling and you see the Merritt Street channel. Now, if you have others uh, right now, you can request it and give them some grief for not having it. So you can request it from these that are listed, but right now you can see it on uh, the ones that I just went through. Now, there is also a Merit Plus app that you can get on connected TVs, and in order to do that, you need to go on your television to where it offers you uh, the option to download apps. And you can do it for Amazon Fire TV, Android, Android TV, Apple TV, uh, Apple iOS, Roku, or web, and those are all available starting April 2nd. Now, if you go there now, you're gonna type it in and see nothing. But as soon as April 2nd hits, then you can go there and it'll pop up. You can get it, open it, and be able to watch it on your app on your television. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five different ways you can see this. You can find Merritt Street Media on your television in Bayside, New York, and it's even more in a lot of cities. So if I bump into you on the street and you say, I can't find Merritt Street Media, I'm not going to believe a word you're saying. You're just not trying because it's very available. So tell your friends, if, you've, if you're watching this, tell your friends to watch it because this walks you through dots close together connected with a bright red line. 
so you know exactly where to find us and exactly what you can watch. So I'll be watching to see if you're watching. If you have an iPhone, uh, I'm gonna tell you how to do this. You get your iPhone and you need to go to the App Store. There's this little magnifying glass down here at the bottom. You need to click that and it's gonna take you up here to the top and I need you to type in Merit Street or you can type in Merit Plus, but I'd rather you type in Merit Street. And you can do this on your iPhone or your iPad or an Apple computer. You're going to see uh, our app come up and it's labeled Merit Plus. There's a little tile, it says Merit, and a little plus right next to it. When you get that, you're gonna hit Get, and then a little wheel's gonna go around and it's gonna say Open, and you can click open. Now, this is free, it doesn't cost you anything. And as soon as you click open, guess what? You're looking at Merritt Street Media. And the first face you're gonna see is mine. If you scroll down, you're gonna see all the different shows, schedule, everything that you can possibly wanna know. So if I see you on the street and you say, how do I find Merritt Street Media? I'm gonna know you didn't watch this video. Okay, so you can see from the video, it's, it's really very simple. And there's something else you can do. If you've got Apple TV, you can go to the Apple Store and you can download the Merritt Street app. You have to go to the Apple Store. If you've got Apple TV, it's free. It'll, it'll pop up Merritt Plus. You just download it, open it, and you can watch this on your phone, or your iPad, or your computer, or you can watch it on your television. Either one. What are you going to find when you get there? I wanted this to be a destination network, one that you can turn on in the morning, leave on all day long, and not be concerned that your children are going to come in and see something that you don't want them to see. This is a family based network that's got core values that I hold near and dear, that I think you will hold near and dear too. Here's a look at this is just a promo, but it gives you a look at what Merritt Street is all about. Take a look. Can you feel it? It's rising up now. We, we are, are building, building something, something new Excellent. for you. Come on, yeah. This is something you're going to be part of. This is not my network. This is our network. From head to toe, got it going on, got it all. Setting up the trends, keep up, no renaissance. Don't you're giving people usable information that can change their lives. How can that not work? And that's exactly what I'm going to do all over again. Using common sense to find common ground. So join our Merritt Street family. We're rethinking the way news is covered. We just returned from the Texas-Mexico border. Dr. Phil was down there with me, and you won't believe what we saw down there. News you can actually use. We want to add full context and perspective to every story we tell. Everybody does what? but we do why. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning on Merritt Street. We've got your top stories every single morning right here. This is news you will actually enjoy. Because news does not have to be boring. Where news meets lifestyle. Join us for a show that's gonna keep you informed, entertained, and so much more. Get ready to be hooked on not just news, but lifestyle and every single moment. That is so much fun. One, two, three. Welcome to Dr. Phil Primetime. I'm standing at the border between Mexico and the United States. How under any theory is that okay? You're gonna save lives by what you're doing right now this minute. You're surrounded by people who do care about you. Steve Harvey. Hey folks, my motto is I'm gonna be fly to the day I die. Hey, take some notes and watch me. Let's do a little fact check. Watch me. Watch me. I'm Mike Rowe. I'm Bad Grills. Please welcome to Merritt Street, Chris Harrison and Lauren Zima. You 
don't want to miss out. You want to be part of building something that we are excited about. It's all on Merritt Street. Come, Come hang, hang out, out on, on our, our street. street. Now that was pretty cool, don't you think? And uh, we have four hours of news every day. We got news in the mornings, and we got news in the evenings. Morning on Merritt Street with Dominique Soxie and Fanchon Stinger, really great journalist, and they're more fun than you can shake a stick at as well. I'll give you a sneak peek at what you can expect to find with them. So take a look at this. Time is such a valuable thing, especially in the morning. And how you spend those first few hours can set the tone for your entire day. At Merritt Street, we're building a new morning show where our guiding principle is to always value your time. We'd love for you to join us. Be part of our community. Based in Texas, we are literally right in the middle of everything. Each morning will be packed full of news, information, advice, and a lot of fun. <laughs> and we promise we'll never waste your time. I'm Dominique Soxa. I'm Fanchon Stinger. Join us for Morning on Merritt Street. Weekdays, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central. On Merritt Street, new essential television. In the evenings, we've got news on Merritt Street, and our key anchors there are Chris Gutierrez, Lonnie Coombs, and Lindsay Keith. Chris is a seasoned journalist, and Lonnie You've seen on my show for many, many years. She's a former prosecutor in the DA's office in L.A. So she's serious about getting it right. Take a look. The first page of a book never tells the full story. And those news alerts and headlines, like the ones we get on our phones, don't even scratch the surface of what the story is really all about. Stories are like people, multi-layered and complex. It takes some digging to find the truth, but when we find it, it can change our world. We like to dig. The news on Merritt Street, essential television. As you can see, there's been a lot going on, and we've got a great news department, great physical plant here. We think the anchor of everything here is Dr. Phil Primetime. I wanted to be on in primetime so I can talk to men, moms, everybody. You know, I've been talking to people in daytime, but I wanted to talk to people that are home in the evening so I have a broader target base that I can discuss all of these key issues with. So it's now Dr. Phil primetime. And just to give you an idea of what we're working on, here's a little trailer that gives you a sense about what we're working on content-wise. I think you'll see we're digging in and we're getting real. Take a look. We are giving people usable information that can change their lives. How can that not work? And that's exactly what I'm going to do all over again. Welcome to Dr. Phil Primetime. Smugglers cut through the border wall to sneak in migrants to the United States. I'm standing at the border between Mexico and the United States. How under any theory is that okay for us to be spending tax dollars to traffic children? Doctors are acting like they're God. What she witnessed there was so morally and medically appalling that she had no choice but to expose what was really going on. I submit and I serve my husband. You said you submit to your husband. <laughs> Why are you looking at me? I'm not trying to start trouble. Sextortion killed my son. From the time Gavin was contacted by his sextortionist till he took his own life was hell on. One hour and 40 minutes. One hour and 40 minutes. That's how deadly a game we're playing here. The video of her student assault has been viewed and reported 67 million times. No one's called me. Can you see this on camera? That is enough to kill everybody in this audience times two. You're gonna save lives by what you're doing right now, this minute. What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear was to get blackmailed. 
You're surrounded by people who care about you, who will fight for you. You know what his greatest fear should be? Is you being here. Well, you can see from that trailer for Dr. Phil Primetime that, as I say, we're digging in and getting into the things that I think are just really what's happening within families, whether you're worried about your situation, your children, your grandchildren, or whatever. I think family in America is under attack. I think some of it is intentional by what I call tyranny of the fringe, these fringe activists that are pushing narratives on people and trying to rewrite history, biology, science, economics, just making up things, I guess, the way they wish they were. That's not how they are. That's just how they wish they were. Well, you can't do that. I mean, you can do it. You can tell each other that's how it is, but you just don't rewrite hundreds of years of science. You just don't, you just don't, erase history. It is what it is. And that's what I'm focused on. Look, we've been working on this now for a couple of years. I was working on it while I was still on in daytime. I took a year to build this out and work on it. This is one, if you're walking, you might want to look at on YouTube when you get back. When we started taking down our set at Paramount, uh, which had been up for 21 years and was the longest running show in the history of Paramount, which is 105 years old. Uh, we did a time lapse camera, so you get to see the whole thing come down. And when we started building the Dr. Phil primetime set here in Texas, we did a time lapse camera there so you can see it being built up. So it's fun to kind of watch one where they're tearing it down and then watch the next one where it's going back up. So take a look at these time-lapse cameras. History coming down and history being built back up. And finally, um, on what was the date that we launched? It was April 2nd, right? We didn't want to go on April Fool's Day. I mean, that was a bad karma, right? So we didn't want to do that. So we waited until Tuesday, April 2nd, and then we floated this boat with a very special ribbon cutting. And uh, you're going to recognize some people at this ribbon cutting. Uh, first, you're going to see that I couldn't find the ribbon to cut. <laughs> Because it had a bunch of flowers and and greenery all around it, 
and I had some big scissors, and I was afraid of cutting somebody's fingers off. But you're going to see some major players there because this is really, you know, they call this Dr. Phil's network, but it's really Dr. Phil and friends because you're going to see some major players here that have joined me at Merritt Street. Let's take a look at the ribbon cutting first because I, I wish you could have all been there, but you weren't. But we, this was a this was a big day in my life. I'm here to tell you, this was a big day in my life because uh, you don't get your own network every day. But this was a big day in my life, big day in Robin's life. So pay attention to who's standing around with me, and I'll give you some more information about who all that is in just a second. Take a look. Welcome to Merritt Street Media. God bless you, and we celebrate you. You ain't seen nothing yet. All right, here we go. Count down. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. All right. Well, there you have it. I didn't cut anybody's fingers off, and I did get the ribbon cut. And really, this was a really exciting time for me. And um, you notice uh, right beside me was my very dear friend and trusted and respected colleague, Steve Harvey. Steve is part of the Merritt Street family. And look, you all know Steve is hilarious. He's a very funny guy, very talented guy. When you think about Steve, you think about Family Feud, you think about all the different things that he's done on the comedy side, his stand-up, uh, Kings of Comedy, one of the original things that he broke out on his daytime show. But Steve is also a very deep individual, very principled individual. I invited him to join this Merritt Street family some time ago, and uh, he actually made a comment about that recently. I want to share that with you. It'll give you some insight into Steve. Now, you got to understand, we've been friends a long time, so he calls me Philly. He didn't call me Dr. Phil. He calls me Philly. But, I mean, we've vacationed together. We're just really good friends. Everybody always thought we were competitors because he had a daytime show and I had a daytime show. And in Hollywood, you're supposed to compete and all that sort of stuff. But that was not our relationship. Our wives are best friends. He and I are best friends. We we go on vacations together and dinner together. We've been in each other's homes. It's just he calls me Philly. What can I tell you? Here, take a look. Philly calls me. You know his track record. You know what he does. I know you didn't need no money. That was So that was cool. I was relaxed right there. Because this ain't a dude that, you know, Philly, we don't have a relationship. Well, you, you know how you got people call your house and you go, oh, uh, what the hell they want. <laughs> uh, what a great guy. Um, but we do have a lot of fun. But, I mean, he has a really big heart and is a really caring, really caring guy. And we've known each other a long time. We've, we've been down some roads together, and uh, we're going to do some interesting things. One of the first things we're going to do is a Father's Day special because he works with young men that don't have fathers in their lives and, and does a retreat with them every year. And I'm going to be there this year. We're going to shoot it, turn it into a special so you can see what he does and how he goes about it. Also on stage was Nancy Grace, another great friend of Robin and myself, we're going to have a lot of true crime on the network because I know everybody's interested in true crime and I think the more you know about it, the less naive you are and the less you can be impacted. Nancy Grace is there. She sits on top of our true crime vertical uh, on the network. She's going to have a daily show. Nancy Grace, passion, power, and noble. Let's do a little fact check on what the truth is. Unmatched determination. I'm just having a hard time <laughs> believing this. Undefeated in court, and now an unrelenting advocate for justice. When it comes to true crime, Nancy Grace is the real deal. Every day is a chance to stop crime and keep one more person safe. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace, 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central, only on Merit. You probably also recognized Chris Harrison, former host of The Bachelor for, I think, 21 seasons, and his lovely new wife, Lauren Zima. 
The two of them are going to have a morning show together, and we're also working on a really interesting dating type show that has some really psychologically intriguing twist to it that I think is really addictive. I think you're going to be fascinated by this. Uh, Really proud to know Chris and to have him part of the network. Mike Rowe, uh, who you know from Dirty Jobs fame, is part of the network. I've done some things in my career unsavory things, things that I don't discuss in polite company. Who's our guy? But some stories simply need to be told. Never mind the risk. There we go. That's right. Driving a tank. Somebody's got to do it. Weekends on Merit. Essential television. Bear Grylls is part of the network. Robin, my wife, is going to have her own lifestyle type show. I know all of y'all love her and think she has a great sense of style and a flair for all of that. She's going to be there. Scott Rasmussen, one of the best polling experts in the country to let you know what's going on and how people feel about things, is going to be on the network as well. Cody Crouch has a really interesting show called Centuries Collide which looks at kind of how things have evolved across time, how things change but stay the same in many respects. I'm Cody Crouch. On my new show, Centuries Collide, American History, I'm traveling across the United States, uncovering the incredibly true history of what makes our nation so great. Centuries Collide is a travel history show that tastes like adventure, smells like Monty Python, and is guaranteed to embarrass your middle school history teacher. Let's say you've got a mole on your face. You're a witch. Go to jail. Henry, I am your wife. Definitely a witch. We're recreating some of American history's greatest moments exactly how they happened. Didn't you think The Rock would be bigger? Welcome to the craziest, strangest, most whateverest crash course on American history. Step right up, we'll break it down. On this show, we strive to be absolutely truthful and correct. Just maybe not politically. (laughs) Buckle up. It's time for Centuries Collide. Weekends on Merit, Essential Television. Very interesting show. I've seen some of the episodes that have been completed. We've also made a a special deal with Cops, the Cops franchise, Bad Boys, Bad Boys, what you going to do when they come for you, Cops and Jail, which gives you a real insight into the other side of uh, the law. You all know I'm really big on... um, law enforcement and and military and support them in in a big way. So cops in jail are going to be on. So we've got a great lineup of uh, movies on the weekend in partnership with the Great American Family Channel. They're going to be sharing content with us on the weekends as well. And a couple of other things that I can't quite divulge just yet because we're just finishing up some of those things. So And then we've got a show called Behavior Panel. Now, you've probably seen these guys on my show before. They have a show on YouTube. And these are guys that have worked in deception detection, interrogation with the military, homeland security, law enforcement, uh, corporate America. These guys are the best of the best. And they're going to be breaking down. You know, you see sometimes people giving interviews and stuff on the news, accused of crimes or politicians that are trying to explain things away or get you to buy into a certain mindset. They're going to take those interviews and break them down and tell you who's lying, who's telling the truth, what you should be looking for. They're going to give you some skills you can use when you're talking to people. Fascinating show. Absolutely fascinating. You're going to love it. All four of them are going to be involved in that. You know, there's a real blueprint for Merritt Street Media because you've probably heard that I've written a new book. It's called We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues. Doesn't that have a ring of truth to it? We've Got Issues. And the subtitle is How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. 
and it's time that we stand strong. Now, this book talks about a lot of things that I know you have on your mind. I know you have it on your mind because it's been out for several weeks. It's on the New York Times bestseller list, and people are stopping me everywhere I go, bringing up different aspects. We talk about all this inclusive language that's gone on, what you can and can't say. We talk about this equality of outcome that's being peddled around. We talk about what's happening in the schools. I talk about the 10 principles that are essential for a healthy society, for a healthy culture. For example, number one is be who you are on purpose. Be who you are on purpose. You got to own that. Live with intention. And to do that, you got to sit down and think about, you know, what do I really value? What are my values? One of them is you can't be silent just so other people can remain comfortable. You just can't do that anymore. If you do, you're losing by default. You're letting the loudmouths control what's going on in America. You can't do that. We can't reward bad behavior or support things you don't want to see more of. We talk about all of these things. Some of this has gotten so insane, parts of this read like I'm making it up. But I'm not making it up. We've got colleges out there that won't even have an admissions office anymore. Why? Because, well, that implies when you say admission that somebody's going to be rejected and that might hurt somebody's feelings. So now they call it Office of Enrollment Management. I kid you not, they call it Office of Enrollment Management so as not to hurt somebody's feelings. The Justice Department, you don't have felons anymore. You have justice-involved individuals. So your family member wasn't raped. They just intersected with a justice-involved individual. They're not a felony rapist. They're a justice-involved individual. You didn't have a loved one murdered. No, no, no. They just had a head-on collision with a justice-involved individual. Are you kidding me? We're afraid of hurting a murderer's feelings by calling them a murderer. So we don't have felons anymore. We just have justice-involved individuals. Now, somebody's got too damn much time on their hands to sit around and, and make this stuff up. You can't say brainstormed anymore because that offends somebody that maybe had a head injury. Seriously? I'm waiting for somebody to come along and protect us bald people. You, you can't, when are they going to say we can't say you're going to snatch you bald anymore? <laughs> when are we going to drop the bald eagle as being our, our national bird? Because I, I swear it would be a great comedy routine if it wasn't so sad. We've gone too far and somebody needs to push back. We've got people that don't want to teach our kids about the fact that there was slavery at a time in our country um, because that's negative. Well, you know what? How are you ever going to learn from your mistakes if you don't acknowledge having made them? Well, who's thinking for these people? That's why I said what I said about Israel and Hamas. I, look, I'm not a politician. I don't understand geopolitical things. But I know when people invade a country and murder infants in their crib, that's wrong. They say, well, what about all the children that get killed in the Gaza Strip? All the Palestinian babies? That's horrible, too. Of course it is. That's horrible. And they say, we need to have a ceasefire. You mean like the one we had October 6th? We had one October 6th before the invasion of these non-combatants, I saw a sign that said, Gays for Palestine. Well, I'd like to see them march into Gaza with that banner and see what happens. They'd throw them off the top of a building. We're not teaching critical thinking. We've got to get back to common sense. So we've got issues, how you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity, 
is kind of a blueprint for what we're embracing and working on at Merritt Street Media. All of these shows, everybody involved here, Steve Harvey, Nancy Grace, Chris Harrison, Mike Rowe, Bear Grylls, Robin, all of these people want to get back to core values that everyone can embrace. And that's what this is about. I want people to tune in. I want you to tell everybody that there's this new Dr. Phil's Merritt Street Media and Dr. Phil's book, We've Got Issues. I tell you what's going to happen when you read that book. You're going to say, yeah, I, I agree with probably a lot of what I say in that book. You just didn't have the facts to push back with if somebody was trying to peddle you uh, a bunch of hooey that you, that you knew wasn't right. You know, for example, people know that kids shouldn't spend so much time on social media. They don't know how right they are. They don't know that those algorithms are actually designed to target young people. And when I say target, I mean they know what they're doing makes them anxious, depressed, and lonely. And they could change that, but they don't because if you're emotionally upset, you click more. And they could show them a box of puppies, and they'd think, well, that's really cute but it's only cute for a little while, and then they quit clicking. But if they can show them something that upsets them, they click harder and longer and more frequent. And that means money. And I prove that in this book, and I challenge anyone, invite anyone to fact-check anything in that book, because I did. Before I wrote it down, I fact-checked it top, side, and bottom so people would know the facts, so they can use those facts, whether it's talking to the school board or talking to their children or talking to their neighbors. This is a book that is designed to unify, not divide, but we have to unify among ourselves first. This 70, 80 percent of middle America needs to come together and know why, and this book is a rallying point for that 70 percent that has kind of had a live and let live attitude. This is what they need to say, this is what we're rallying around. These are the values. These are the core values and beliefs that we're rallying around. And this is the science. This is the empirical data that supports those beliefs. And that's what it's all about. Now, here's my question for you, Lafern. Is there anything I haven't talked about, about Merit Street Media, or about We've Got Issues, that you think people need to hear about? You covered it all. Uh, I mean, it's like you wrote it. It is great. I think everything that you have is for the people. And, and that's one thing that we talked about before is how you are able to put these topics in a way that people understand it and can take the facts and learn and grow. And that's what you're about. Now, if you're wondering where all this is taking place, we're right in the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. That puts us in the middle of the country, which means we're easy to get to. So if you want to come be in the audience, if you're in Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth, we'd love to have you in the audience. If you fly in to make a day of it and want to be in the audience, you fly into DFW, come out of the North Gate and hang a left, we're like 10 or 12 minutes from the north gate of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth uh, Airport. So, I mean, we are so easy to get to. You come out and take a left on 114, and we're right there, just a matter of minutes. And we've put together a really cool experience when you come to be there. And uh, when you go to Merritt Street Media, you just click on Be in the Audience, and we take care of you like you won't believe. And the studio is so beautiful. Yeah. It, it's, it's nothing I've ever seen before. It's great. Yeah. It really is state-of-the-art, isn't it? It's state-of-the-art. It, it's, really, it's really good. So, all right. Well, I'm going to stop talking and um, let you guys get back to your world. 
If you haven't listened to last week's Fill in the Blanks with Steve Harvey, do so. He's a lot of fun. And you also see a side of him and hear a side of him that you don't see very often because we are good friends. And so he's very transparent with me. And it's a great conversation, if I do say so myself. Uh, so take time to, to watch that when you get a minute. Listen to it, watch it. You'll really enjoy getting to know Steve at that level. Didn't you enjoy it when you, he was I, there? I loved it. Is He is so fun and so open and so real. And yeah. you don't meet many people like that. No. Uh, there's a special moment in there he talks about called his turn back moment. Bookmark that. Listen for what he calls his turn back moment. It'll change the way you think about the struggles in your life. We all have them. And he talks about his. And it's, uh, it, it's really moving. It really is. All right, thanks for being here, guys. We'll talk to you next time.